Welcome to Creating Dashboards, using CA NIM Soft Monitor version 7.6. Please note that the functionality depicted in the video, does not include updated user options. For current CAUIM version 8 dashboard functionality, see the CAUIM dashboards videos. Or, refer to the documentation wiki, to see features for all versions of CAUIM dashboards. The links for both the videos, and the wiki, can be found in the description below this video. The Dashboard Portlet in the Unified Management Portal allows you to create and share views of key information about your network that can be understood at a glance. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the Dashboard Portlet to create this dashboard that displays information about CPU, disk, and memory usage. The top part of the dashboard has shape widgets that change color according to the current data value. The lower part of the dashboard displays the same data in different types of widgets. You can follow along and create this dashboard and see data from your computer. Right now we are in live view mode, which lets you preview how the dashboard looks with live data. To edit or create a dashboard, change to edit mode. We'll create a new dashboard. The first thing we'll do is prepare the canvas. In the Canvas Properties tab, you can set the size of the canvas, the background properties, and the grid properties. Notice that by default, Snap to Grid is turned on to help you align widgets to the grid. If you want to align widgets between grid lines, you can always come in here and turn it off. We'll add a background image by clicking in the Background Image field. This opens the image gallery. A background image is often used to brand your dashboard or to add a map to show the location of elements in your network. If the image you want to use has not been added to the image gallery yet, click Upload Image. We'll use a file prepared for this tutorial. Now the background image is displayed on the canvas and we can add other items to the canvas and move them around and it won't affect the background. If you're creating this dashboard on your computer, you can do it without the background image. Now we're ready to add some widgets to the dashboard. Click the Widgets tab and drag a rectangle onto the canvas. It's a little wider than we want, so we'll drag the edge to resize it. We can also drag a corner to resize both sides of the rectangle at once. The lower right corner, however, does not resize when you drag it. This is so that if you have small shapes, you can click the right corner to move the shape around without changing its size. With the rectangle selected, we'll click the Clone button twice to create two more rectangles with the same shape. We'll select each rectangle, and in the Widget Properties tab, we'll enter a label. CPU, Disk, and Memory. The label is what appears in the dashboard. This is different than the name, which is the file name for the widget. The name is used, for example, in the Navigator tab, which lists all the widgets on the canvas. Next, we want to connect these rectangles with a line, so we'll click the Connector Mode icon. Now we can drag from an anchor point on one widget to an anchor point on another. Click the Connector Mode to turn it off, and now, because the lines are anchored, we can move the widgets around and the lines remain attached. You can also create a standalone line unattached to any widgets by dragging a line from the Widgets tab onto the canvas. For this dashboard, we'll use anchored lines. Next, we'll add the gauge, the line chart, and the linear gauge and we'll give each of them a label. Finally, we'll add a text widget for the title. Drag the widget onto the canvas, double click, select the text to replace it, 
And if you click outside the text box, you can see the actual size it will be. And then you can resize the text box as necessary. And voila, we've got all our widgets on the canvas. And we're ready for the next step, assigning a data source to each widget. When you click the Data Sources tab, this missing data source icon lets you know which widgets do not have a data source assigned. Widgets can display data from alarms, SLA or SLO compliance percentages, or QoS measurements. You can also drill down from one dashboard to another by using a dashboard as a data source. There are two advanced data source types that require special knowledge, the probe and the SQL. Information about all the data source types is available in the documentation accessed by clicking the Help icon. For this tutorial, we'll create three QoS data sources. Click the plus sign to add a data source and enter CPU for the name. Choose CPU usage for the QoS measurement and your computer for the source. For the target, choose System so that we see system level CPU data. Click Test QoS to verify that the data source is working. Notice that you can test for only the latest value or for the values for the past hour using the multi setting. Most often you will use the single setting, but the multi setting is useful to preview data for a line chart. Click Create and we have our data source. We'll add another one, and this one will be for the disk. Enter disk for the name and choose disk usage for the QoS your system for the source, and the C drive for the target. Click Test QoS, that's looking good, and Create. OK, one more data source, and this one will be for memory. We'll choose Memory Usage for the QoS, your system for the source, and for the target. Test QoS, looks fine, and click Create. There you have it. Now we have our three QoS data sources. Now we'll assign the data sources to the widgets by dragging and dropping. Notice that as you drag a data source onto a widget, the border of the widget turns green. This indicates that the widget supports this type of data source. If the border turns red, you cannot assign that type of data source to that widget. Assign the CPU data source to the CPU widgets, the disk data source to the disk widgets, and the memory data source to the memory widgets. Notice that we could assign data sources to the lines. This could be useful, for example, if the dashboard depicts a network and the lines represent links between network elements. For this dashboard, we'll leave the lines and the text widget without data sources. The next step is to fine tune our dashboard by setting some properties for the widgets. Select a widget to see its properties in the Widget Properties tab. The properties available change depending on the type of data source assigned to the widget. So it's easiest to, to assign the data sources first, then set the widget properties. On our dashboard, the squares at the top have a data source assigned and a default color. But if the square is always green, it's not telling us much. We'll define a color map so that the color of the square changes as various thresholds are reached. Click the CPU square to select it. Under the Color menu, click the plus sign to add a row to the color map. Click the Color field to display the color picker. We want to set the threshold to yellow, so we'll move the slider to the yellow part of the spectrum. Then we move the color picker to the shade of yellow that we want to select. If you want to adjust the opacity, you can do that with the Opacity slider. We'll enter 80 for the threshold. This means that if CPU usage is below 80%, the square is green. At 80%, it turns yellow. Click the plus sign to add another row. We'll add one more level, red, for 90%. We'll define a similar color map for the other two squares. This time, instead of using the color picker, we'll enter the hex codes we used for the first square to make sure the color is the same for all the squares. For the disk square, We'll set the yellow threshold to 40,000 and the red threshold to 60,000. For the memory square, we'll set the yellow threshold to 6,000 and the red threshold to 7,000. 
you may want to adjust the threshold values according to the size of the disk and memory on your system. Note that the gauge already has a color map defined for it under the gauge properties. Next, we'll set properties for the linear gauge. First, we'll turn the vertical button off, making the gauge horizontal. Now we can resize it and position it the way we want. You can also decide whether to display ticks and labels on the gauge. And you can play around with the other properties here to see how they affect the appearance of the gauge. Note that in the Widget Properties tab, you can also see which data source is assigned to a widget or change that data source. A couple other tips. When viewing properties for the line chart widget, Click the name of a data series to view the properties for that series. If you have lines in your dashboard, you can set the properties under the line menu. For anchored lines, you can change the anchor points using these drop down menus. We've finished setting properties for the widgets, so we'll switch to live view mode and see how it looks. Now our dashboard is ready, and we'll do the final step saving and publishing the dashboard. Switch back to Edit Mode and choose Save from the Dashboard menu. When you save a dashboard, you can choose the visibility setting, which determines who can see the dashboard once you publish it. There are two types of users, regular NIMSoft users and account contact users. NIMSoft users are like admins and can manage other users and accounts. Account contact users can access only their own account. If you are an MSP, for example, you would register as a regular NIMSoft user and manage your customers as account contact users. When you save a dashboard as private, it means only you can see the dashboard. If you choose public, other regular NIMSoft users can see and edit the dashboard. If you want account contact users to be able to see the dashboard, save it to their account. Account contact users never see private or public dashboards. They only see dashboards assigned to their account. We'll save it as public so you can share this dashboard with other regular NIMSoft users. Now that it is saved, we can publish the dashboard by choosing Publish from the Dashboard menu. Publishing saves a copy of the dashboard that you can share with others. You can go back into edit mode and make changes and it won't affect the published version until you publish the dashboard again. Under the dashboard menu, choose view published version to see the published version of the dashboard. That's it. Now you have your dashboard displaying live CPU, disk, and memory usage information that you can share with other users. For more detailed information about how to create dashboards in CAUIM, Refer to the documentation wiki, or visit the UIM community to join in the discussion. The links can also be found in the YouTube description located below this video.